Alright guys, welcome back. I'm going to try to make this quick. Uh, I want to do a quick demo here using the amp pound. I've been seeing a lot of uh, guys talking about this thing that aren't sure too much about it on um, online and I've done a couple of videos using it. Uh, let's go through it a little bit. We have an F-150 here. It's an 04. It has a parasitic draw. I'm going to show you. See the meter? We have uh, a 400 milliamp draw on this thing. Okay, almost half an amp. Um, I've already diagnosed this, uh, but it doesn't really matter. It's a good case study. It's It was quick, uh, relatively simple and straightforward, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set you guys up so you can see. I think. Just bear with me here while I try to do this the best I can for you. Here's my amp hound. I'm going to set this up here, this light, and hopefully I can see what I need to see down there. Uh, I'm going to turn this on. <clears throat> Basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the two probes, you touch them together, make sure you have continuity that these that there's no problems. I always test these like you would a test light, make sure the test light is working before you start making tests. Okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to my fuses and I'm just going to go across the back of my fuses and here's what I want to see. You hear that beep? That fuse, that circuit is fine. There's no draw on that circuit, okay? Here's another one. Alright, there's no draw. Now, keep an eye on this, okay? And listen to the sound. See that? And it stopped. Now, now here's the thing. What we can do is we are, that is a 25 amp fuse that we're on, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to fuse type and we're going to change it. Hang on. Okay. Fuse value. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. Now, sorry about that, guys. I'm screwing myself up a little bit. 25 amp mini fuse, okay, that's what it's showing you. And there's your draw 0.37 or 370 milliamps. Okay, you're almost, if you look at the meters, for, you know, 0.4, which is 400 milliamps, you're right there. You're showing your problem circuit, okay? Is it necessary to have the exact fuse uh, that you're working with in here? Well, it depends. I mean, I like to do it just to verify how much of a draw that circuit has on it because you, sometimes you may run into something where it has multiple fuses drawing or whatever. So we might as well go through the whole uh, diag here so you guys are understanding what we're doing, right? So your amp pound, uh, by going across these fuses, I was quickly, quickly able to determine which circuit has the draw. I did not pull fuses. I do not pull fuses, okay? If you pull fuses, you cause problems and you start chasing ghosts. Don't pull fuses, all right? Buy an amp pound. This thing's like a hundred bucks and it is incredibly good, all right? Uh, I've heard nothing bad about this from anybody who is out here diagnosing, all right? There's nobody that's talking bad about this tool. It's a great thing to have in your box. Buy one. It's fantastic. Um, I've owned this for a few years. Uh, you can do this with a meter as well guys. You can do this with a fluke or whatever. I like the amp pound because it's a dedicated tool. I like to have dedicated tools for certain things, okay? So just my preference. Alright, so let's move on. Let's see here. Pull the circuit. Uh, I, I pulled because Ford does not mark their fuses, uh, you know, in the box. They don't tell you what they are. So that's just something you have to get used to. This is my circuit my fuse circuit whatever you want to say that has the problem is number 38 okay if you could see that fuse number 38 so I pulled my diagram for the power distribution and let's see if I can hold this a little better fuse number 38 right here that's circled and I'm hoping this is coming out okay on the camera I don't know 100% if it is See if I can move my light up a little. That'll help a little bit. 
let's see. Uh, yeah, fuse number 38, right here. And if you look, it only goes to one thing, which is the subwoofer. All right, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna prove it out together because this is as far as I went. I'm gonna take you guys with me in the back. I already unbolted my subwoofer assembly. What I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna do two things. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open my thermal camera. I wanna show you the benefits of having one of these as well for anybody who's not using them. I'm gonna open my thermal camera and if you look, if you look at that heat signature right there, you can see that this is, this piece, this component is actually warm, okay? So, I'm going to unplug it. What I'll actually do is I'll move you guys so you can see the meter. I'll focus you on that. Hopefully I'll focus you on that. Right there. Hopefully you can see the meter, 400 milliamps. And I'm gonna unplug this guy, if I can. This thing is definitely warm at best. Hang on, I can't get in there. There we go. How are we looking? Hey, look at that. There's no more drain. There's your short, okay? And there's my sockets. Right. So that's it, okay? This thing is unplugged. Here's my connector over here. And uh, I'm gonna unplug this first. Actually, never mind. This thing is freaking heavy too. And this is your that's your subwoofer amp which is shorted okay and uh, like I said this is warm to the touch and I saw it through the thermal camera that is the benefit of a thermal camera uh, this thing you would not see obviously because it's not out in the open but if it was something like a radio uh, head unit a uh, cluster that was staying on you would absolutely see it. So, very good to take a thermal camera, take a quick visual before you do anything else. You may be onto something, okay? Uh, I hope this explains a little bit about why we use the amp pound and the benefits of it. Um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.